Hello, my name is Aaron Yardley, and I am a PhD student for the Department of Chemical and Biological Engineering at the University of Sheffield. I work within Dr. Solomon Brown's research group, closely with Dr. Robert Milton. During this research, I collaborated with Stefan Bellinghausen and Dr. James Lister, applying my machine learning method towards Stefan's wet granulation model. The work presented here is effectively an application of a machine learning technique to aid model-driven design. It is a case study showing how a computationally efficient global sensitivity analysis technique can be used to reduce effort in experimental design and parameter estimation. Therefore, I shall first present to you the context of a case study and then take you through each step of the model-driven design for said case study. Model-driven design requires a well-calibrated model which is commonly approached through factorial design of experiments. However, an implication is that the effort increases by two to the power of the number of the parameters. Therefore, in this work, we aim to achieve a well-calibrated model through this cycle that shall reduce the experimental effort significantly. We first identify the most impactful parameters. We then calibrate these parameters using experimental data. This calibration is done through a specific experimental design that prioritizes the effect from the critical process parameters. Hence, put it all together and we shall create a well-calibrated model. The objectives of this work entails identifying both the impactful parameters and the critical process parameters, often which I call CPPs. We then want to we then want to propose a reduced experimental design that achieves a well-calibrated model. Therefore, to achieve these objectives, we propose a specific model-driven design case study. Here, we look at a 10-litre high shear wet granulation process filled with two kilograms of dry powder. Using this process, we applied engineering rules to derive the ranges of values to be used for the four operating parameters specific to the process scale. The process model shown by the semantic here is a one-dimensional population balance modeling framework, which applies a lumped parameter approach. Altogether, 20 modeling parameters are lumped in the rates expression. Therefore, together with 20 modeling parameters and four operating parameters, a typical design of experiments approach would make the HS WG a costly process to implement. And so the following model driven design focuses, focuses on developing a predictive and well calibrated model. This is done through the two efficient global sensitivity analysis one for modeling parameters and one for operating parameters. Within the objectives, we have already identified which are the modeling and operating parameters and we have identified a need for the global sensitivity analysis. And so we can move straight into the thick of it and discuss the global sensitivity analysis. This work applies the Swallowyer indices technique for the GSA. And because of the complexity of the PBM computer model, the traditional method of computing Swallowyer indices using Monte Carlo techniques are impractical for this research. Therefore, as the workflow shows, we have used the underlying computational model to sample enough training data to optimize a machine learning technique called Gaussian processes, often which I abbreviate to GPs. The GPs are then validated and used to analytically calculate the spoliancies. The remaining of this talk will take you through this model-driven design workflow of the wet granulation case study, discussing both methodology and the results at each stage in the workflow. Please remember that we are conducting two GSAs, one for the modeling parameters and one for the operating parameters. First, sampling of the HSWG process model was conducted to produce enough training data to optimize the GPs. This is achieved by identifying the parameter ranges, setting the mean and standard deviation, and then using G formulae to sample the process model using quasi-random sampling. But some of you may be asking, what are Gaussian processes? So I'll give you a very brief explanation to explain how GPs are used as a surrogate model. 
GPs is a machine learning technique, and so the code takes training data to optimize hyperparameters in this equation. This is done using standard Bayesian conditioning. So the Gaussian process takes a one by D row vector of inputs called X and returns a Gaussian random variable as an output. It predicts a mean value and a standard deviation, giving a level of uncertainty in the predictions. The learning of the machine learning method is done to optimize a similarity function, which expresses the correlation between the responses to the input variables. And this work optimizes the hyperparameters using the Romcomma software library available freely on GitHub. Once the GP surrogate models are optimized, it is essential that they are validated before using them to analytically calculate the spoliancies. Hence, for both the modeling parameters and the operating parameters, the sample training data was split into five folds for testing. So about four folds are used for, to train the GP, while the remaining fold is used to test for predictions against true simulation outputs. This process is then repeated so every sampling point is used for testing when not used for training. Here, you can see the results from modeling parameters and the operating parameters. Clearly, the operating parameters are almost perfect, with a correlation coefficient very close to one. Root mean squared error, close to zero, and very few data points where the true value is outside of a predicted distribution from the GP. The modeling parameters are not quite as perfect, but, Given there were 20 input variables from the 20 modeling parameters, compared to just four for the operating parameters, it is expected for the GP's validation results to be a little different. Importantly, both GPs are acceptable, and they can now be used to accurately calculate the spoiling indices for each parameter. At this stage in a high shear wet granulation case study, we want to analytically calculate the spoiling indices of each input variable using the GP surrogate model for both modeling and operating parameters. But what are small indices? Well, it's a variance-based global sensitivity analysis, which decomposes the variance of the output into terms that are dependent on their input variables. And this is shown in the following equations. The total small index value, the total small index value for the input variable i is made up of the variance from i alone, S1i, plus its interactions with J, S2IJ, and its interactions with the other variables, S3, S4, etc. So each small index value could have a value between zero, where it has no effect on the output, or one, where it corresponds to all the effect on the output. So using the two surrogate models, we calculated the small indices for all 20 model and parameters, and the four operating parameters. The two tables here show all the results color coordinated so that red is near zero and green is near one. The spoiling indices are calculated for each output and then an average for the four outputs is shown in the final column. Once the average is calculated, they are set into groups dictated by a criterion threshold that we have set. For the modeling parameters, they could either be impactful parameters or not impactful parameters dependent on whether the parameter's average spoiling index value was above 0 0.1 or not. Whereas the operating parameters were grouped into three levels of impact. If operating parameters had an average spoiling index value above 0 0.05, then it is a critical process parameter. Then the CPPs are split to be a moderate CPP or a high CPP, depending on whether it has a high impact or a very high impact. Let's have a closer look into the modeling parameters. Clearly, it's easy to first spot the not impactful modeling parameters, which have an average value below 0 0.1. We can see four named parameters and then the remaining parameters, which only just sum all together to make 0 0.05. Clearly, these have negligible impacts. Therefore, 16 other parameter values in this model can be given reasonable estimates from literature without any need to accurately measure them. So, the 20 modeling parameters have now been reduced to these four impactful modeling parameters. The collision coefficient, the breakage coefficient, the critical pore saturation, and the nuclear to drop ratio. And this is a very important discovery, 
it's an incredible result for the wet granulation process model. As together, with the operating parameter findings that I am about to discuss, we can propose a new experimental design for this case study. So looking at the operating parameters, we have a different threshold set for the criteria in this work. This is to enable the number of levels needed in the experimental design. The results show the liquid solid ratio has a very high impact and is very dominant for all four outputs. Whereas the liquid spray rate has a very low average spoiler value and so is not a CPP. The remaining two operating parameters can be seen as moderate CPPs, just making the CPP threshold. The experimental design proposed here has been developed from the two global sensitivity analysis results shown previously. The modeling parameters depend on critical operating conditions and so need to be accurately estimated. We have already deemed that only four of the 20 modeling parameters need to be determined accurately and so the characterization tests and parameter estimations for these four modeling parameters can be, one, can be done using a reduced experimental design only based on the CPPs. Ultimately, knowing the high level impact from a liquid solid ratio has meant the reduced experimental design is also more robust. Likely producing a much more well calibrated process model compared to our conventional factorial design of experiments would. This is due to these four levels of liquid solid ratio determining the critical granulation conditions. Additionally to them for initial experiments, five and six are also used to calculate the porosity correlation. At critical conditions, triplicates are then performed to assess the reproductibility as shown here in experiments seven to eight. Then experiments nine to 11 allow the needing time to be reduced at critical conditions. Overall, we re recommend to use experiments three and seven to 11 to estimate collision and breakage coefficients and the critical pore saturation. Then the remaining experiments are used to validate their estimated values and assess a predicted power of the model. Finally, you can compare our proposed experimental design derived from the GSAs to our conventional experimental design, which is a two to a four factorial design of experiments with three midpoint triplicates. The DOE shown here is not a very promising method with only two levels for each factor. It will struggle to determine the impactful model and parameters and confidently at different CPP values. I am pretty confident that our proposed method is not just beneficial because of efficiency, but is also designed with the impactful model and parameters in mind. And so it will determine the impactful model and parameters and efficiently calibrate the high shear wet granulation model. Therefore, I believe this high shear wet granulation case study has hit all the objectives set at the beginning of this work. It has applied a machine learning sensitivity analysis to the case study. It has discovered that only four of the 20 modeling parameters are important. It has found only one operating parameter to be a high level CPP and ultimately reduced their experimental effort by a huge 42.1%. Confidently, I believe this work has proven that machine learning can be used to hugely benefit model-driven design. And I, for one, am excited for the future to learn how much this can improve industrial development by reducing the experimental effort required to design particular products. Before I finish, I thought it would be best to show you the two references presented in this paper, in this presentation. The first, Bellinghausen 2020, shows the verification of a process model. And the second is the wrong comma software used for Gaussian process and global sensitivity analysis. For further work using GPs, please see two related papers that I published during my PhD, and hopefully many more will soon follow. Thank you all for listening, and please ask any questions. I'm really excited for the opportunity to network and to chat to many of you as possible. Please watch out for my other presentation, where I hope to see you further use of Gaussian processes for chemical engineering. Thanks a lot.